I really considered singing as an intro. Nah. <laughs> Yo, what is up, guys? I'm GDJ and I'm back in with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Razer V2X professional microphone. Obviously, they have a good place in my heart. Uh, they're the first company I reviewed. And it uh, was the first video to actually get me a traction. And to be honest, all the criticisms I have of the earlier mic, uh, they kind of did away with and actually built upon and did improve on. But before we get into that, just make sure you hit the sub button, hit the notification, leave a dislike, as I greatly appreciate that. So now, let's get right into it. Okay, so this is the best microphone I own today. Visually, aesthetically, and of course, especially for rec recording audio. Okay, so as someone who actually records his voice all day and makes horrible videos, I can assure you, having a really good microphone is an essential for anything. But let's be honest though, the, the top of it though, you know, I'm not the only one that thinks it kind of looks like an afro, right? Right? Like you, whatever. So the first thing that actually stands out in comparison to the previous microphone is the fact that they actually added a volume and gain dial. And of course, it's something that I have been seething for. If you don't have a gain control on, on your microphone, you're gonna have to do that post editing or while editing on Final Cut or Adobe Premiere. It's like, bruh, you know, like, it's like, you're gonna give me all that work, and then I'm gonna have to do all that post edit. It's like, nah, I, like, I can't, I, you know, that, that's a little too much. It's a little more time efficient, and uh, it just works better, you know? And then obviously you have your volume control. Now what's the difference, right? You have your gain dial, and then you have your volume dial. Right, so basically, in a sense, I'll put it in the simplest way. And basically, if you've ever video edited ever uh, Final Cut or, or Adobe Premiere, then you're familiar with decibels. And so basically, the volume just controls the decibels. The gain tries to balance everything out. It controls the, how sensitive the microphone is. So the volume controls, obviously, the volume, but the decibels. And uh, the gain controls uh, how sensitive you want your microphone to be. Whereas if I placed it on the other corner of the table, then depending on how much gain I put on it, it will be more sensitive to picking up my voice even at a greater distance. Now, of course, nobody likes the FDI listening, so uh, there is a microphone mute button. The thing about this microphone is it's with such a really good build quality that throwing it out the window probably wouldn't do much damage to it. You know, I'm, I'm not recommending you do that, but I'm just giving you a visual example, okay? Now, with a product like this, it's the little things that matter, okay? Just like a relationship. And the most important thing I'd say for me is the microphone monitoring. As I mentioned before, I'm someone who makes terrible videos and records all day. So when it comes to actually having to decide what to cut, when to cut, and which portion to cut, it gets difficult doing it post-editing. And especially when I'm trying to figure out how high I want the volume to be and you know the gain function and all that. And the mic monitoring just makes it simpler. So basically what that is, is at the back there is an aux cable and you can plug in your headphones. And as you speak, you can hear your voice uh, live on air. So uh, there's no need to, you know, record, go on Final Cut, test it out, don't like it, delete. And it's a really good determinant to tell if the gain is too high or too low, if the volume is just right. There is a built-in shock absorber. But what I'd recommend is try to use it on a surface that you probably don't and won't be bumping into a lot. Because in such a case, then the microphone will thump out uh, whatever hit it hears. And that's going to just tend to either cut out your audio or at least spike it up in a way that it makes you a little muffled. And that's, that's just due to the shock absorber because as soon as the microphone gets hit or, uh, you know, anything that just disrupts the audio, then it's going to take that as a shock to the microphone itself and the audio is just going to, trust me, it's going to come out ridiculous. You don't want to go through the whole re-editing process. Trust me, like I've considered my life and reconsidered it multiple times just due to re-editing. You take hours and hours and then you come back, it's like, bruh, like I'm tired. Uh, so if you're into uh, streaming, podcasting, Twitch, uh, YouTube, as far as compatibility, it is compatible with both Macs and PCs. Uh, I, for one, use uh, Final Cut. I know some people that use uh, Adobe Premiere, but let me know what you think, bros. Like, I really do think that the microphone is an essential for really anybody. Uh, recording sessions, uh, whether it's recording audio, vocals, podcasts, uh, instruments. But give me your opinion, let me know what you think. Do you agree, do you disagree, hate it, love it, dislike my opinion? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. I'm Jadija, and I'm out. Deuces.